Welcome to a new Precious Plastic instruction video. So today we're going to build the plastic extrusion machine. Basically this machine poops a line of plastic. This is a little bit like those old toys we had when we were a kid. When you had some clay and you could squeeze it into little shapes and forms. Only this time we're going to do it with plastic. And you can use this technique to make raw material like 3D printer filament or granulate or you can find another creative way to use it. In this video we will guide you step by step how to make the machine. You can download all the technical information and the blueprints. And if you have any questions or something is unclear, feel free to post the topic in our forums. Let's get started. All right, so this is the machine we're gonna build. It consists out of six different components. We have the hopper, the barrel, the nozzle, the barrel holder, the framework, and the electronics. And we're gonna start off making the hopper. This is where the shredded plastic goes into the machine. Let's build a hopper. We finished up the hopper and now we're going to make the barrel. This is a crucial part of the machine. This is where the plastic gets heated and compressed. The measurements of this barrel are based upon the universal plumbing system, so this should make it easy to find a tool set like this to tap the wire. Here we have the barrel, and inside this barrel there will be an extrusion screw. But before we're gonna edit, a brief lesson on extrusion screws. So here we have an industrial extrusion screw. It's a big one and it's expensive. What these things do is that they transport plastic from this side to here. However, this one is conical, which means the gaps here are bigger than here. So while it's being transported, it's also being compressed. So you can build the pressure. But like I said, these things are expensive. We found a more affordable way to do this, which still works properly by using a wood drill. And this goes inside the barrel. <coughs> Make sure the pipe you use for the barrel is completely smooth from the inside so the screw fits in perfectly. And as you can see, when we turn the screw, it will transport the material forward. A quick tip when connecting the hopper holders. Already attach them to the hopper, and then you can put this one on. So when you weld it, you, you're sure you have the right angle. The barrel finished and the hopper fits perfectly. We finished the hopper and the barrel and now we're gonna make the nozzle. This is where we can control the output of the plastic.
So we finished up the nozzle and it looks pretty badass. And now we're gonna connect it to the barrel. We can just screw it on here and make sure it's really tight. And this screw is used to adjust the flow of plastic that comes out. And this one right here determines the shape of the plastic. So for instance, for this one, we made a small little round hole, but you can also make a cross or a flat one or a lot of holes. Now we like to use this nozzle because, well, we can adjust the flow of plastic that comes out. However, since it's built upon the universal plumbing system, you can easily change this nozzle for another one. And we recommend to play around with these things because there are many options possible. Pick something that fits your needs. We finished the hopper, the barrel and the nozzle. And now we're gonna build the barrel holder. It's pretty simple, but it's needed to hold the barrel together on the framework. This thing is pretty straightforward, just some metal tubes and angles. So we're gonna weld this all together and then it should be ready. Ready for the next step. <laughs> Alright, so we finished the hopper, barrel, nozzle and the barrel holder. And now we're gonna build the framework. It looks like a lot of work, but it's quite easy. Hey, um. Is there over a half jaar weg? Framework is finished, we painted everything and connected together. Uh, make sure everything works, and then the last step is to connect this one to the frame. And we like to put it with the nozzle slightly out, but you can put it here or here, it doesn't really matter that much. So we're gonna connect it and now we're gonna wire up all the electronics. Almost done, we finished the hopper, barrel, nozzle, barrel holder, and the framework. Now the last step is the electronics. We're gonna make this metal box and wire up the temperature controllers and the motor and then it's all ready.
Okay, so first thing we need is a temperature controller. And they come in different shapes and sizes. We have a big one, an old one, a crappy one, a small one. And we like to use this one. We will attach this cable, which measures the temperature, which he will understand. Then we'll connect a solid state relay to this with this heating element. So temperature is measured, controlled, and then sourced to this little vent heater. We're also gonna connect a switch and a little light. Then we're gonna wire it up with some cable, connect to everything and attach it to the machine. This might look super complex, but it's quite doable if you follow the schematics. This looks super complex. It's quite doable if you follow the schematics. Toffige cast. These are the heating elements for the extrusion machine and these three are connected to this controller and this one to the top one. That's because the nozzle wants to be slightly higher temperature and this is the thing that measures the temperature. So we're just going to connect this in the heater. Alright, so after we finished up the heating elements we're going to look for the motor. This should do it. We found a slow, powerful engine on the scrapyard. If you need to know the specifications, it's in the blueprints. Uh, right now we're gonna connect it. Extrusion machine is ready. We did a few tests, everything works. But before we're gonna show you how it works, we would like to add a small suggestion. So currently the nozzle decides the amount of plastic that comes out. However, a better way to do this is by having a controllable engine. Now there are different ways how to control the speed of an engine by different controllers or regulators. And these things tend to get complex and expensive. But if you have one lying around or you understand how it works, we highly recommend it. If not, just use a motor with a fixed speed with this nozzle and you're good to go. So here we have our extrusion machine and before we're going to extrude some plastic we first need to heat it up and we're just going to turn it on and we're going to set the temperature. Uh, the temperature depends on the types of plastic you're going to use so make sure to set it properly and then we we'll wait about 10 minutes and we will extrude some plastic. The machine is heated up and as you can see the nozzle is slightly higher temperature than the barrel that's because uh, this makes it easier for the plastic to flow out. And now we're gonna turn on the engine and put some plastic in. That's a smooth line of plastic. So it always takes a while before you have the right extrusion settings, but once it's going you get this nice line of fluent plastic to create new things. It might take you a while before you find the right settings between your temperature, your nozzle and your speed. And it also depends a little what you want to make. For instance this lampshade required a higher temperature than this 3D printer filament to make. But to help you get started we added some reference material in the blueprints. So you should download that and tweak a little bit yourself and you should be good to go. All right. 
<laughs> Thank you for watching the video. I hope everything was clear. If it wasn't, feel free to post the topic in our forums. And one thing to note is that the machines are built in a modular way, which means you can always upgrade or repair them, but also customize them to your needs. So if you happen to make a hack or customization, we would absolutely love to see it. Because in this way, we can all work together to create better machines. In the next video, we're going to make molds and show you how to create things with these machines. And for now, thanks for watching, good luck with building, and hope to see you in the next Precious Plastic video.